welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please give me an email, joe at nomadphp.com. Tonight, I'm going to be doing my very first Lightning Talk. I'm going to be talking about Easy Vagrant with Laravel Homestead. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave me some feedback. All right, like I said, we're going to be talking about uh, Easy Vagrant with Laravel Homestead tonight. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Laravel Homestead environment. Uh, I feel like it's one of the easiest options to get up and running with Vagrant, uh, especially for people who have absolutely no experience with the virtual machines, let alone uh, what Vagrant is and uh, rapidly creating and destroying uh, local Vagrant machines. So first start off, if you don't know what a Vagrant machine is or what a Vagrant is, uh, Vagrant is a tool for managing virtual machines. It's an application written in Ruby by an awesome company called HashiCorp. It's completely free software. It runs on Mac, it runs on Windows, it runs on Linux platforms. Uh, you can go download it for free. They update it pretty regularly. It's really well uh, tested and kind of rock solid software. So Vagrant is the standalone application, but it doesn't do everything itself. Vagrant works with providers. A provider is something like VirtualBox, uh, VMware Fusion, or VMware Desktop. Uh, Parallels desktop on, on Mac. A provider is an application that gives a virtual machine access or provides access to a virtual machine to a computer's hardware, a virtualized hardware. With virtual machines, you're actually virtualizing everything on a computer. All of the CPUs, all of the RAM, all of the components, all of the hardware, the BIOS, you're virtualizing the whole stack. If you've heard of Docker, where you're virtualizing just parts of a container, this is the opposite. You're, you're actually virtualizing much more. Uh, VirtualBox is a completely free product as well as Vagrant. Uh, it's often the most uh, used, and that's what we're going to be demonstrating tonight. Uh, VMware is a paid solution, and you also have to buy a plugin for Vagrant for to work with uh, VMware. Uh, Parallels is also a paid service. Uh, there can be some advantages with Parallels and VMware, specifically if you have a large application with lots and lots and lots of files. Uh, some of sometimes the v VirtualBox shared folders will slow down with a lot of files, so some people tend to just skip VirtualBox and go straight to VMware. I would start with VirtualBox, especially if you're new, because it's completely free, and see, see how much mileage you can get out of it. Now, how does Vagrant actually deal with these virtual machines? Well, it's really come, it really comes down to this API magic that happens in the middleware. You have these providers, which you're only gonna use one provider at a time. You're either gonna be using VirtualBox, VMware, or Parallels. So tonight we're going to be using VirtualBox. So Vagrant is this Ruby application that is consuming the VirtualBox APIs uh, through this Ruby API magic back and forth. Vagrant tells VirtualBox how to build the VM and what image of a virtual machine to use. The great thing about Vagrant is it runs almost anywhere. It runs on OS 10, runs on Windows 10, and also Windows uh, 8 and Windows 7 as well as just about any Linux platform that is a, is a modern Linux kernel. Now, Laravel created Homestead based on the ideas that the Laravel framework itself kind of prides itself on to be very developer friendly and very easy to use and very easy to pick up. So naturally, the Homestead project is also very easy to use and very easy to pick up. You don't have to use Laravel with Homestead. I'll show you that at the end. But it, what Homestead ultimately became was this really easy to use a virtual machine environment that was really great and really rock solid and very configurable. So why should you use Homestead? Why should you use Homestead instead of any of these other boxes? Well, just to show you an example, the number one box downloaded for VirtualBox is Ubuntu Trusty 64, as you see, with 24 million downloads. The next downloaded box is Laravel Homestead with 9 million. After that, you get down to one of the HashiCorp's boxes with 6 million. Down there, after that, after 6 million, it jumps all the way down to 2.8 million. And that's CentOS's uh, Cent7 box. I mean, that's a ton of downloads. It's a ton of people using this. It's a ton of people reporting bugs and contributing fixes for it. So you could do worse with using a different box. So what's a box? Well, a box is a snapshot of a virtual machine that's compressed into a file format that Vagrant can easily import. These are stored in a hidden folder named .vagrant.d in your user's home folder by default. When you download a base box for the first time, this is where it's stored. 
when you create, when you use Vagrant to create a new virtual machine, that base box is copied from your home folder to the folder that you're running your Vagrant command for, ideally your project folder. This creates an isolated copy of that virtual machine that you can make changes to and utilize without worrying about breaking or modifying or having to re-download that base box. The goal of Vagrant is really easily reusable and disposable environments. So what's in Homestead? Well, since it's coming from Laravel, a lot of what's in Homestead is what you would expect to see in a modern PHP stack. It's built on top of Ubuntu 16.04. We just updated it to, uh, to run PHP 7. Uh, we still have HHVM support. It's Nginx out of the box. You have the option of using MySQL or MariaDB. Uh, if you are building a small application or if you have a SQLite database, we support that out of the box as well. We also have love for Postgres. You can use Postgres right out of the box. We also have tons of Node.js uh, uh, packages and stuff pre-installed. Uh, we have up-to-date comp Composer installed. Uh, a lot of the new uh, stuff that coming out of the JS world mo moves so fast, we're always really quick to add that to Homestead. You also have stuff like Memcache and Redis and even Beanstalk right out of the box, already configured with a lot of basic defaults that you would expect to uh, start working with. So now that I've sold you on it, how do you get Homestead? Well, before we do that, let's assume you're starting from scratch and you want to install VirtualBox 5.1 and you want to install the VirtualBox extensions. Now just a quick note, if you already have VirtualBox 5.0 installed and you go to the About menu and say Update, it's only going to keep you on 5.0 something. You actually have to go to the website and download a new copy of 5.1. I'm not sure why their updater doesn't, do, doesn't work like that, but it's just how you have to work with VirtualBox. Once you have all that installed, you install Vagrant. Once you have all those three applications installed and configured, which is really easy to do, you just run the installer and it does everything it needs to do for you, you're going to clone the actual Laravel Homestead folder. It's a Git repo on GitHub, and you're going to close, clone this home folder to our user's home folder in this example. We're going to clone that to the home folder on my Mac here, and in the Homestead folder, we'll see the end of that folder, we'll run this init.sh script, and that just creates a hidden folder on my, in my user folder that allows me to customize Homestead for my own environment. This way, I can come back later and update Homestead without having to worry about merge conflicts. And I'll show you how to do that too later. So once we have this Homestead environment initialized, we'll have this .homestead folder. And here, what I've done is I've opened up that folder, and you can see that there's an after.sh file, aliases, and homestead.yaml. Homestead.yaml is what we're worried about right now. If we open this up, you'll see that it's the core file where you're going to really kind of set up Homestead completely. I mean, you, all you really need to do is worry about this file when you're just starting out. We're setting a ton of options here for the virtual machine. You'll see that we're setting our IP that we want the VM to use. We're going to set up how much memory the VM should take, how many CPUs, and also which provider. We're also setting SSH key information. A lot of this stuff is perfectly fine if you're on Mac or Linux to leave as these defaults. If you're on Windows, you'll have to change some of the paths. We're also mapping folders from our host operating system, which in this case is my Mac, to our Vagrant machine, which is Homestead. This allows us to easily edit code on our host system without having to transfer the code to our virtual machine. Next, we map our sites to our folders. That way, Homestead will automatically create an Nginx site for each one of our projects we want to add. So in this example, we're going to map this Quick Start Basic 5.3 folder to Home Vagrant QS, and then we map this imaginary domain, quickstart.app, to home vagrant qs public because that's the public folder of our uh, site root. We can also add databases here. By default, Homestead comes with the Homestead database just as that's just the, uh, the convention that Homestead has, has adopted that th there's a database called Homestead. If you add multiple projects, I'll show you later how to add multiple databases here as well. Once we have Homestead configured, we're ready to launch it. You just simply change directory back to your Homestead folder, wherever you cloned it. We cloned it to the root of our user, uh, the, uh, our user's folder. So we just say Vagrant up. And you're going to have a ton of information scroll past you. The important thing to note here is this forwarding port section. You'll see that the one we really care about for this talk is port 80 on the guest, which is the Vagrant machine, the VM, is being mapped to port 8000 on the host, my Mac. So what happens is I can go to, in a web browser, localhost on port 8000, and that will be forwarded to port 80 on the VM. This will allow me to use a generic URL to access Nginx running on the VM. 
as the Vagrant Up continues to run, it takes about a minute, depending on your hardware, to, to run. It's relatively quick. You'll see a bunch of these provisioner shell scripts running. Nothing to worry about uh, when you're just getting started. And you'll also see that we just downloaded uh, the brand new uh, version of Composer. We always want to make sure Composer's up to date. Now, once the VM's up and running, how do we actually access it? Well, the first thing to do would be to kind of jump into the VM and check out what version of PHP we're running. Well, you can do Vagrant SSH, and that will automatically SSH you into the Vagrant environment, and you can see that we're now at Vagrant at Homestead. Well, if we want to check on PHP, we can do PHP-V, and you'll see that we're running PHP 7.1, uh, relatively fresh install. Now, the next thing we need to do to set up our application is run our migrations. So we'll CD into this QS folder, and that QS folder is that mapped folder in Vagrant that's actually on our host machine. So we'll run our PHP Artisan Migrate, which just runs our migrations for our Laravel app. We'll run PHP Artisan DBC, which runs our database seeder so we can have some fake data in our application. Now let's log into our application through our browser. And you'll see we went to localhost port 8000, and that is being forwarded to port 80 on Nginx in the VM. That allows us to browse our website locally without having to do any tunneling or anything else or worry about having to configure any domain names in our host file. You can also ask, access Homestead through something like SQL Pro on localhost using port 33060 because that was one of the other ports that we mapped. And we can check out our users table that we just were looking at in the browser and you can see that we have all of our sample users. Now, what if you're done? What if you're done working on Homestead for the evening? Well, you can exit out of your console. You can do Vagrant Halt, and this will do a graceful shutdown of the VM. If you broke something or if you're, it's, something's just not acting right and you just want to start over from scratch, you can do Vagrant Destroy, and it'll prompt you. It's like, are you really sure you want to do this? You say yes, and it'll destroy the VM. When you destroy the VM, you're not destroying the base box that you downloaded originally. You're only destroying the local copy in this project. That way you don't have to do that big one gig download again of the base box every time you do a Vagrant Up and a Vagrant Destroy. So how do you upgrade Homestead? Well, we've been releasing a lot of updates recently, so a lot of questions have come up on how do, we, how do you properly update. Well, there's two parts to Homestead. There's the Homestead repo, so all you do to update that is just get pull origin master, or if you want, you can check out one of our release versions. The next part of updating Homestead is the actual Vagrant box itself. It's the, it's the snapshot of the VM. You can ask Vagrant itself if that box is outdated. You can say Vagrant box outdated. And it will say, okay, well, we're going to check and see if this is up to date. Now, it didn't tell me anything here. It's because I already am using the update, up, most up-to-date version. Now, if you want to force an update and just say, no, really, go update the box, you can say Vagrant box update, and it will say, okay, now I'm checking. Well, the latest installed version you have is 101, and that fits your constraints of 100, and it's this provider virtual box that you're using. It says, okay, you're already running the latest version, nothing to do. Now, earlier I said Homestead isn't just for Laravel, and it's not. You can see that we're adding Slim PHP as well as a Symfony app. And when you map your sites, I actually forgot to do this in my example, but for the Slim, the Symfony app, you actually have to tell it a type of site, so it would be a map to a Symfony domain instead of the duplicated slim map that I have there, the two field would still be the same, this home vagrant Symfony web, and then you would add a second, a third option there of type, and you would say Symfony, and we have a custom Nginx host creator that would create a Symfony vhost for you. You can also add your databases uh, as we did below. We added two more databases because we added two more sites. Anything that uses the public web root, like our first and second, our second applications do, will work out of the box without having to specify that type. A quick note on Homestead versions. A lot of people aren't ready for 7.1 yet, and that's fine. We understand you're still running your tests. You're still testing 7.1. It's pretty new. You still have some time to upgrade before you, you know, get off of 7. But what if you're still on 5, or what if you still need 5? Well, the Homestead version of the repo that you should use for PHP 5.5 is 2.2.1. Now, you shouldn't use the Homestead base box for that because there's actually a bug with MySQL that you have to fix, but I've actually fixed that for you in an updated box that you can use with Supernova09 slash Homestead Legacy instead of the Laravel Homestead box. I have some more information online on my blog if you're interested in doing that or if you have a problem with that. Check out the Homestead repo on GitHub. We have covered that in the issues. 
If you want PHP 7, you can just check out version 3.1.0 and use any of the box versions that are uh, 0.6.1. That'll give you PHP 7. If you want the newest, latest, and greatest of Bleeding Edge, just check out 4.0 and use a box version greater than 1.0, and that'll give you the newest 7.1 box. So some links to check out. Vagrantup.com is where you can go get Vagrant. Virtualbox.org is where I recommend that you start with your first uh, uh, provider if you've never done this before. Uh, Laravel.com docs is a great place to start. There is the All the Homestead documentation is there. We also recently just added some more documentation on how to do upgrades. Please leave me some feedback. I would love to hear what you thought about this talk. This was something that I kind of threw together because I've been spending a lot of time working on Homestead. Please give me some feedback. I would love to hear what you have to say. My contact information is there. And thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit JoinedIn and leave me some feedback.